Daniel, so Dan, what is what are you wearing, dude? Um, uh, YI three space motion capture suit. So what would that do for the gamer? Is this something that we could have at some point, or is it for a dev, or what is this mainly for? Um, kind of for both. It's mainly for motion capture, but we also do some real-time interaction stuff with it. And yeah, uh, right now we got a UDK demo that we're just kind of showing with it. That's a 3D visualization of it. So you're saying if you moved around, you can actually move the character in game? Yeah. Walk around a little bit. Oh, that's pretty dope. Dude, that's pretty damn cool. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. I, the only problem is that I don't have a good headset to talk to people and go ahead and like play with this, so oh, I kind of yeah. have to look back and forth. But. Well, what do you do? I mean, dude, that's so sick. I mean, if there's something like that for even the console, who cares what you look like? That's pretty dope. Yeah. So is there anything that we can see about like this in the future? Like, uh, maybe... Uh, is there like a, a time when you guys could ship this to people, or is it just uh, right we're now? We're selling these things right now, primarily just for motion capture, but if developers wanted to use this to do some real-time interaction VR stuff on their own, they could go ahead and do that right now. We can sell it right now on our site. Oh wow, that's pretty dope. Alright, so that's very cool. So this is technology more for the dev at the moment, but could potentially go toward the gamer, yeah? Yeah. Sweet. Well, thank you very much, Dad. Appreciate it. Hey guys, I'm here and we're going to talk about a video game. Is this Epon? Is this the technology for the game? Or, I mean, this is ridiculous. It's, it's, what is this, sir? Uh, this is first a patented technology which permits to have the best interaction between video toys and video games, actually. Oh, I will wow. demonstrate. So, so uh, let me get this straight. So you can basically make figurines kind of like the old war, like 40K. Yeah. And then you can actually interact with the game you're playing in real time. Yes, that's exactly the idea. The idea is to use your uh, miniatures as the pointing device or the interaction interface oh, wow. with your video games. Wow, that's sweet. I'd have another use for all of my uh, miniatures. That's spectacular. So, is there any games that are being developed currently for this technology? So, we are not a video game uh, studios. We are really a technology provider. Yeah. And we are here actually to be connected to all those guys for them to make video, new kind of video games with this kind of technology. Oh, absolutely. So, I do have some folks I know that, that do a lot in regards to this. Oh, I, I, yeah, don't trust me. That's what I'm trying to do. No, that's spectacular because can any figurine be used or is it the base or where is the pointing device? Actually, this is like an NFC tag except this is a Nippon tag which is a patented solution and you have these small tags inside the miniatures and with this tag you can not only have the presence detection not only the identification but also accurate positioning relative positioning between two objects, a rotation as well, even altitude, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Wow. Everything. Wow, so that's great. So people could take their pre-existing miniatures and just add a base, or is it kind of like you have to build a brand new set? Actually, uh, that will depend on uh, the video game studio strategy, because they will bring our technology in their products, so oh, yeah. ask them. <laughs> a little bit of a side income there, but trying to get the new controllers. That's spectacular. I love that concept a lot. So guys, check this out. Uh, you're, is e on the website, or? Yeah, or Oh, awesome. Well, thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate this. Pretty interesting stuff they're doing nowadays, huh? So, so what is he doing right now? You'd have to ask him. I'm count I'm doing the alphabet right now and trying to see if I could just do the alphabet and it'll make it fly. So I guess a sustained motion, you know, or something like that. Okay. Well, let's let's see this. I hope your ABCs pay off, dude. So you need to focus.
focus on one particular thing in order to uh, to trigger it. Can you have concentrating competition? It's like you can. <laughs> That's pretty cool. One VU card has six ports, and you can run six models. Now, six wide you can do because you have a really weird center point in the middle of the bezel, but we can do three wide by two tall, for example, and get this huge display. We run, for example, so it, we what, run... So you can't tell where the monitors are going. Right, so you, uh, you can. Calling. You okay. can. You can actually set up. Now, TJ, you work at Sandboxer. What's Sandboxer? Uh, uh, Sandboxer is a uh, 3D printing service. And so basically, what we do is we allow game companies to upload their um, their 3D files, and we will then let your end users uh, pose them up the way they want to pose them up. Uh, they can switch out weapons, accessories, skins. Uh, in a lot of cases, they can even change facial expressions, and uh, and then we 3D print it. So it's in full color. Um, so it's a fully customizable experience, uh, and it starts about twenty twenty five dollars. And um, is there a volume kind of thing, or can someone get like one done? A minimum of one. Okay. Well, yeah, that's pretty easy for a lot of folks to do. Now, now, can anyone use it, or does it have to be like a game file that you got? We have um, so we're attracting content creators primarily right now, but then end users can go on and utilize their content. So, so if you um, if you spend a lot of time. Uh, with your favorite, your favorite heroes or champions or avatars, um, then if you're if we're working with your gaming company, um, then then the end user can go onto our site and they can pose up the character that they want to that they that they spend hours developing uh, and 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 print them out. So so you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be an expert in CAD or Maya or anything else. Um, you can simply come onto the site. We have a vast library of assets and we have a function called polybonding so you can take take assets and stick them to each other so for instance if I want to if I'm a avatar and I want to I want to use a battle axe I can stick that battle axe the butt of the handle into my hand and then I can use rigging to fold the hand around it and then I can use the rigging to pose it the way I want to or an animation that um, the game developer has allowed me to upload um, and then we'll print it wow that's really cool that's a pretty interesting little service. I think a lot of folks will actually really like that because a lot of my guys are, you know, RPG dudes and they love their characters. So, yeah. again, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so, guys, we're here at the, uh, what is it, House of Moves is the name of the game? Or the name of the, uh, the, the, the house? The company uh, is an L.A.-based company down in L.A. called House of Moves. We're a motion capture uh, facility, predominantly for games. But we do also do commercials and some film stuff. Okay. And, and are these guys all wired up for, like, so basically a game company goes to you and says, hey, I want to have some motion capture, and then you guys take care of that for them, or? We do, uh, we have quite a few things that we do. One, we're motion, primarily we're a motion capture facility, so we've done motion capture for Gears of War, for God of War, for Call of Duty, Black Ops. Um, but we also will take all of that data inside. Um, we help people create cinemas and uh, export depending on what level of work that they want done. So. Oh, very cool. Now, it seems like so it's such an interesting technology to be able to be used. And um, wow. Yeah, and have you been seeing a huge uptick in the use of motion capture over the last couple of years? Or has it been more prevalent in games that are coming out? Or It's a... It's always, it's always been, especially for games, where the turnaround time and the expense and the, you know, trying to get human motion as accurate as possible, um, has always been a pretty, pretty big thing in games. Um, it, I don't know what else. I mean, uh, we've been busy for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. And this is what you're seeing here is motion capture streaming straight directly into the uh, Unreal Engine. Oh, okay. So that's what the wireframes are up there. That's these guys doing it live. Well, so that's our skeleton for our actors right there. And then if you come around here, you can see that's their motion in real time being streamed into the engine. Very well. Interesting. 
the engine wow. gives us a lot of latitude in terms of this particular tech gives us a lot of latitude or gives directors a lot of latitude to do previs. They can come in and bring in their set. They can light. We can light in real time. Where did the light go? We can create environments for them, mm -hmm. um, and they can see actually how their characters are going to move in space and how they're going to how that's all going to feel. Um, so we can spit out the motion capture. We can spit out video. Do an edit and do previs really quickly. And then because we've captured the motion, we can go help them get all the way to the end very quickly. Very cool. Yeah. See, I mean, this is the kind of stuff we like. But my my subs actually love the hell out of this stuff because it's so interesting, and a lot of them are trying to get into the industry. So I mean, this is really fun. So I really appreciate you taking a moment just to talk to us and uh, man this is this is gaming 101 guys this is good stuff so thank you very much <laughs>